There I was. Last year, do you guys remember what happened to me right before we had convention? Right. Somebody yelled, the cougar. Do you guys remember that? I was face to face with this giant cat. Gnarly teeth, the whole nine yards, right? So for those of you who've had a chance to get to know me, you know that I love to wear Wranglers, cowboy boots, and Mike Sims. Yes, this is about as far as dressed up as you'll ever see me. But I love to spend time in the woods. And the reason why I love to spend time in the woods, Dave, is because when you're out there, you get rid of the rat race, you get rid of your cell phone, you get rid of all the hustle and the bustle and the electronics and the pulse and the beat and everything. And all of a sudden you get back to Mother Nature and you find that the world is talking to you in different ways. And there are stories, Rodney, that you can learn and parables that are applicable to our daily life. So last few weeks, Matt, I've been out chasing around elk. For those of you who don't come from the West, you may not know what an elk is, but it's a big, like, deer. And I love to eat them. And for those of you who don't know where your food comes from, I know where mine comes from. So I like to go around and I like to chase them. And I'm sitting in this place, I call it the eagle's nest. See? I get all in there and sneaky like, get down in there. And way out in the distance, there's all these elk and I can see them. I've got my spotting scope up and I'm blasting them, I'm looking at them. And I know you guys are going, what in the H is he talking about? But as I'm sitting there and I'm looking, I hear something. I hear something off to my side. I don't know what it is. Earlier in that week, Kevin, I came face to face with a mama bear. So I hear something off to my side and I'm like, is that a bear? How many people would be scared of a bear? Y'all are liars. I had to change my pants. Face to face with this bear. And we look at the bear and we think, wow, here's an animal perfectly suited to survive in its element. Nice, thick, sleek fur coat. Cool in the summer, warm in the winter, keeps the bugs off, it's great, right? Big claws for digging and tearing things apart. Big teeth for tearing and gripping and biting and doing what it's got to do to survive, right? Perfectly suited to survive in its element. Has all the skills, talents, abilities, attributes that any bear would want. And I'm standing, Roger, like closer, twice as close from me and Roger, just a couple feet away from it. And to boot, I have my seven-year-old son with me. That's kind of a scary proposition, right? Kind of unpredictable. We just described all the crazy attributes that this bear could have and what it could do with all those things. Walks out onto the trail, sits there. All I've got is this little headlamp right there. Just a little slimy bean, little headlamp. And it lights up that bear. It's staring at me, Roger. And you know what I did? I had a pistol on my hip, but in that moment I didn't panic, I didn't react. I respect the bear, but all I did was go like this. Get out of here. And guess what? The bear turned and ran. It ran away. An animal that could destroy me, it weighs hundreds of pounds more than I do, and I was in its way, but it ran the other way. It took off. But now, I'm in the eagle's nest a couple days later, and I'm by myself. Now I'm no dummy. I may not be the sharpest tool in the shed, but I am no dummy. I hear something. I'm going to take a look and make sure it's okay. Look back. Don't hear anything. Hear it again. Look back. Don't hear anything. Then all of a sudden I hear it again, and this time it kind of sounds a little bit closer. And out waddles this short, stubby, fat little badger. Anybody here from Wisconsin? I think that's the badger state. Y'all know what the badger is, right? It's a tiny, nasty little weasel. It is a weasel. It's a member of the weasel family. It's tiny, it's nasty, but you know what? It's got claws, even though it's only on a 30-pound body, 40-pound body maybe, Dave. It's got these big, nasty claws, big teeth disproportionate to the size of the body. And that thing's sitting there, and it starts digging and clawing hissing, snapping its jaw at me. And I kind of like chuckling to myself, because I'm like, dude, I weigh 185 pounds and you're like 30 pounds. At that point, he's a few feet away from me. 
but I've got all these elk down here and I want to shoot one of them, so I'm still trying to be quiet, Brandon. I reach down and I grab a rock. I don't even move, D, and I chuck a rock at him. You'd be disappointed because I didn't throw it, like, you know, bring it like a 95 mile an hour fastball or something. But the thing doesn't back up, doesn't go away, it comes a little bit closer. It intensifies the hissing, the snarling, the nastiness, gets a little bit closer. And I'm like, what in the mother of you, son of a gun? You know? And it gets a little bit closer. I pick up another rock, I chuck it at him. He gets so one last time, I pick up a rock the size of a softball. And this time, I kind of bring a little bit of heat with it. And he's close enough that all I have to do is pretty much go like that. Well, then he balls up and he whirls around. I don't know if any of you guys have ever seen the thing on the Discovery Channel, the uh, honey badger. You guys ever see that? Honey badger don't care. I'll let you finish the rest. But he rolls around, he's snarling, he's nasty, and he disappears off into the trees. And so I think, okay, good, he's finally gone. I get back to doing what I'm doing. And as I'm sitting there, I kind of sense something. I didn't even really hear it, I just sense it. And I look down just to my right, and less than five feet away from me, is that daggum badger again, Greg? He's back, Chris. He wants to mess with me. And at this point, he means business. There's no snarling, there's no hissing. He's getting ready to tear me up. Now, I have another story where I got tore up by a 30 pound monkey in the rock of Gibraltar. That's for another day, and we can tell you, I wasn't ready to mess with a 30 pound animal. I had a two mile hike back to my four wheeler, and I didn't really feel like doing it like this. You know, because my leg didn't work. So I pull my pistol on this little dude, and I'm sitting there, and I've got it pointed at him. I don't want to shoot him. I really don't want to shoot this guy. And I said out loud, Kevin, I said, please, go away. And he did this. Turns to John, and he just sits there, and he eyeballs me. Eyeballs me. He walks around me cautiously. Now, I don't want to fall off this stage, but he eyeballs me like that. And then pretty soon he takes off. Now I'm sure you're wondering, what in the world does this have to do with network marketing? What in the world does this have to do with our business? What in the world does this have to do with anything? Well, in the moment, I didn't think anything of it either. But then I had to walk two miles out with a 60 pound pack on my back. And you know, you gotta kind of, you know, be dialed in and focused when you're doing that. And so to, to make it work mentally, I start thinking about things. I get lost in my thoughts. I start thinking about why in the world was that badger so persistent about getting past me and on the way that what I was doing? What in the world? Why was he so passionate about that? And as it turns out, it dawned on me that right below me were a bunch of squirrels. What do you think a badger eats? Big, fat, juicy, gray squirrels. And there was a whole, what do you call it down there in Tennessee, Greg? Like a pack of squirrels or a bunch of squirrels or a herd of squirrels, I don't know. There were a whole bunch of them down there. There were a whole bunch of them. I started thinking about it. I was standing between him and his purpose. He had to eat. Maybe it was a she badger. Maybe she had a whole litter of badgerettes or something like that that she had to go feed and go do something with. And I started to think about that. And I thought about the experience earlier in the week of the bear. It has all the attributes, Brandon, to survive and be successful. All I had to do was clap and that 350, 400 pound bear ran away from me. The badger on the other hand, I outweigh him by six, seven, eight times his weight and he was ready to mess me up. He was ready to tangle with me. So I started thinking about that and going, well, what's my purpose? What's my why? How, am I like the badger or am I like the bear? Am I part of the 2% club that Brandon was talking about? Or am I part of the 98% club that's a big wuss? That runs away. Even with this nasty mustache, you know what? I should be able to you know, win and succeed in life, but sometimes I don't, why? So I started thinking about those things. And I started thinking about my personal experiences in, in this business. I started to think about the first time I sat down and was mentored and I was trained and I was coached. And the first thing that I was asked was, what's your why? How many of you have been asked, what's your why? And yet you give it maybe 30 seconds of thought. It ends up like something like this, Brandon. It looks like this. It's like, I want more time. I want financial freedom. 
I want uh, you know more time with my kids, or I want to be healthier, I want to lose 10 pounds, or whatever it is. And then we move on to the next thing, and we want to start getting into our goals and all that other kind of stuff, and just start taking action. But here's what happens. If your story's like mine, I hit a wall about, oh, a little over a year ago. This hasn't been an easy road for my wife and I. We see these things up here, right, Chris? We see these things up here, and every, we all think, oh, man, everything must be good, but we don't see what happens day to day in every one of our lives. And if you don't have something that is bigger, better, badder than you, like the badger, because i got to give that badger respect. He's bigger, better, badder than I am. I don't know that I'd tangle with him, even with my weight. Would I tangle with him? I don't think so. So what's your why? So I went back and I started thinking about, you know, some of the, uh, the things that I wrote down on my initial why statement about a year ago. When times got tough, Matt, I thought about quitting. Because I can tell you what, I've been on the corporate side of this thing, and as hard as these guys work, I know what it's like. I also know that there's a guaranteed paycheck at the end of it. I know that I can support my kids, my wife, my family. I know that I can go back to the mainstream and get a job. I don't want a job, I want a life. Do you want a job, do you want a life? What's your why? Why are you doing this, Amica? John Raines, Daniela, why are you guys doing this? Have you really got to something? I once heard this guy say, and he kind of talks like this, you know, Mike, one of the things I really like about you is when you fess up, Mike, you like to, you know, you can go up. This guy, he's sitting right up here, he mentored me a little bit. And he said, you know, another thing, Mike, if your why doesn't make you cry, you better give it another try. I don't need to say who that dude is. You guys know who he is, right? And so I started thinking about my why about a year ago when I was about ready to throw my chips in. And every one of you, if you haven't been there, you will be. Because at some point in time, adversity will get tough. So I thought about that. I started thinking about my life. I can support my family in all these different ways. I can do all these different things. What's my greater purpose? Who are my badgerettes? What's the life of significance? What's the legacy that I want to leave? What do I want to do? So I started thinking about some of the experiences, things that you guys probably never know. I grew up in a broken home. Maybe you guys can relate to some of this. Grew up with a single mom, five kids. I'm the second of five kids, ages 10 to 18 months. I watched my mom kill herself almost to the point of exhaustion, working every job you could possibly imagine to support a bunch of kids. Because my dad had moved, took off, got remarried, started a new family, left my mom, 27 years old, with five kids, and no education, no vocational skills, nothing. And as a young man, you don't realize what you don't realize, because we don't know what we don't know. I remember nights going to bed so hungry that I ate handfuls of dog food because it was the only thing that was in our house. I remember going to school, disheveled and not smelling good. Maybe this relates to some of you guys. I remember resenting my mom because of the fact that I didn't have all the things that some of the other kids in school might crave. They had. I didn't have a Nintendo. I didn't have cleats. I didn't have jeans. My brothers had to wear my hand-me-downs that were already ruined. Maybe some of you can relate. What's my why? Start thinking about all these things, right? What's my why? How can I leverage this life unlimited natural health revolution movement to make sure that I live a life of purpose and significance? Am I the bear or am I the badger? That's the question. 
Will I work hard enough so that I can achieve the dream of buying a piece of property that I found in Bozeman, Montana so I can start a young men's youth ranch? Where single moms all over the world can send their sons to meet guys like that one that taught me, Mike, if your why doesn't make you cry, you better give it another try. I know I can support my family in lots of different ways, but I can't fulfill the purpose of helping other young men grow up with positive male role models. A place where I can bring a Ryan Palmer, a Ken Brailsford, Chris Estes, Robbie Law, John Nelson, and countless others of you that are out there to give back to those single moms and help those little boys understand that their mom's doing everything she can. Give her a break. So that those young men, their role models, don't end up being the seniors and juniors in high school when you're in seventh grade. And you're doing things that you know you shouldn't be doing. That's my purpose. Scott, that's my why. I can't quit on those single moms, can you? We have been blessed with so much amazing information here. So much excitement and energy and enthusiasm and everything. But when we leave here, it's what we do with it. So I challenge each and every one of you, please don't look past your why. Whether you're brand new or whether you've been with us or whether you, you know, been to the top and maybe you're kind of sitting somewhere in the middle now, Find your why again, your greater purpose, so that you can achieve the level of significance that you were intended to live. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for the opportunity to be here with you. I appreciate it. Thank you.